All right, everybody, hail and welcome back to another episode of Random Heathen Ramblings here on the Midgard Musings podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching today. My name is Jesse and I'm your host as always. I've got a special guest lined up today, returning yet again uh, for, God, let me see, what's the, had him on the channel twice. Don't think we've actually had him on a, on a podcast. I, however, have been featured on two of his podcast. I'm, of course, talking about Nightshade from the Flatline to Beatline podcast. And uh, all the information about Flatline to Beatline is uh, going to be in the show notes and, of course, down in the description for all of my viewers on YouTube that are able to watch the video version of this podcast. And if you have not yet checked out the option for you to become a member of Midgard Musings on YouTube. So that way you can also, um, amongst other incentives and perks, get uh, the video versions of this podcast. Also check the show notes because the link for you to join the channel is right down there um, or up there or over there or right in front of your face. <laughs> so check out the show notes. Um, you know the drill. Um, but for right now, we are going to go ahead and, um, you know, get through our intro. So let's get this started. All right, so like I said, today's guest is going to be Nightshade from the Flatline to Beatline uh, podcast. We're going to be talking about a number of things, a number of ramblings. I know um, some of the things on the list are going to include this whole gas shortage debacle thing where um, I've remained quiet about it for the last week. Um, at the time of this podcast being... Uh, recorded we are just in the first week of when the um, colonial pipeline was the victim of a cyber attack so you know by the time you guys get to this we'll already have been past the week of, of, of that um, so we'll see where we're at at that point but up to this point um, there are gas short shortages or uh, shortages of uh, of uh, gasoline um, in many states throughout the United States, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Georgia, Florida, a little bit in Tennessee, although we're not seeing it too bad here. Um, it's prices have gone way, way up, um, but we can still find find gas. But uh, it's 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 due to this, you know, panic buying thing. So I have I've I've remained, you know, quiet about the whole thing. Uh, but we're gonna talk a bit about that with Nightshade. We're also going to talk about um, a bit of, you know, reintroducing public gatherings, public events, uh, post-pandemic restrictions, you know, because um, now with everybody getting vaccinated or the vaccine becoming more and more accessible uh, to more and more people, um, the restrictions uh, for gatherings and uh, all this other kind of stuff um, are starting to be a bit more relaxed. So I know a lot of people, not just in the pagan community, but people all over are looking at opportunities to, you know, get back together with people and have, you know, larger scale events or or host things and, and be a part of things. So we're going to talk a bit about that too. And honestly, that is, uh, that's what's on the agenda, but you know how these random ramblings go. You just, you never know um who's going to say what and what's going to happen and where where things go or what rabbit hole we go down but uh that's sort of the the agenda uh as it were for today's podcast so you know if you guys want to be a part of the podcast um whether as a special featured guest um you can always send me an email midgard musings tn at gmail.com you can always you know uh follow me on my social media send me a direct message on twitter Send me a message on Facebook. All the information is going to be in the Linktree link that is annotated in the show notes of the podcast, as well as in the description of the video. 
Um, but if you want to just, you know, call in, maybe you just want to send a message, send a, uh, some, some, you know, moral support, some vocal support, whatever, an idea, a suggestion, your thoughts on a podcast, you know, whatever. You've got a couple options. You can send a voice message uh, with just a one minute limit. You can send a voice message to the podcast on any of your podcast listening platforms. Um, I know for sure that Anchor has it. So anchor.fm slash Midgard Musings. Uh, go to that uh, website on your browser or download the Anchor app on your phone and find Midgard Musings there and send me a voice message. Um, but for the most part, I think the best option would be for you to, get, uh, to call the Midgard Musings hotline. That number is 615-671-9832. And we'll uh, listen to your message, play it on the podcast, get some dialogue built around it. It should be fun. I uh, just want to say thank you to all the listeners. Thank you to all the members of the channel that are the reason why we have video versions of this. You guys are the real MVPs, guys and gals out there. So thank you so much. So um, check the link tree for all the ways that you can support Midgard Musings. Other than that, um, but for right now, let's go ahead and welcome in Nightshade from the Flatline, the Beatline podcast. Let's go. All right, folks. Well, here we are. We've got uh, Nightshade that just uh, that just hopped in. So, Halen, welcome to Nightshade. Uh, thanks for coming back on the. Well, actually, thanks for coming to the podcast. You're a your first time podcast guest from on mine. Even though I've been on on your show a couple of times, you've been on the YouTube channel, but. For those maybe that are listening new or, or watching new that don't know much about you, why don't you uh, tell us all who you are and what you do out there? Well, uh, I'm the host of Flatline to Beatline, um, <clears throat> the only podcast of its kind, absolutely, and I'm proud of that. Um, yeah. For those of you who don't know, it, it, it's uh, I interview uh, fellow pagans, witches, Satanists, and Luciferians who are business owners, authors, artists, musicians, and content creators who are trying to get their names out there. I focus on the ones who, who don't get, who get overlooked, who get ignored because they're not popular and they're not profitable to other, you know, podcasters. Uh, mm. I'm also the co-host of Hail and Horns uh, with Kendra Raven Moon, where we discuss topics people don't want to talk about. They, they just hide it. Uh, as an example, last night I was live on, we were talking about uh, the language of gender neutrality. Uh, mm. You know, things that do affect uh, the, the occult pagan witch circles. And yeah, so, you know, yeah, that, that's pretty much me. I'm Germanic pagan. Uh, I've been practicing uh, traditional witchcraft for this is my now 33rd year of practicing. So, you know, wow. yeah, you, that's you know, you know, much. you say 33 years to me looking at you, you know, that, that to me would be like your whole life. I, I'm 40. Uh, which is I'm, I'm 43 years old. I turned 44 oh, you, this year. I've been doing it since I was 11 years old. You're looking good, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I think it's in the food, you know. It's, not, it's in the water, maybe, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a lot of the grapes and strawberries I eat, you know, or the steak, one of the two. <laughs> Combination of them all, yeah. Fruits fruits and meats. And vegetables, absolutely. No alcohol for me, no thanks. <laughs> gotcha. Ah, okay, well, then, then maybe that's what I need to, maybe that's, that's, that's maybe why I'm looking so rough these days. Oh yeah, I get Not a shot fruits. of I, I get a shot of Nyquil, and I'm like, ooh, <laughs> forget it. Well, you might get crazy up in here with the I, Nyquil I'm a, and stuff. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a lightweight. You give me a, a little bit of Michelob Ultra, and I'm like, okay, I don't feel good. All right, I'm an embarrassment to Irish people. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not one of us <laughs> yeah it's like i don't know this guy we don't, cl we don't claim him <laughs> yeah i'll probably get a buzz off non-alcoholic beer <laughs> <laughs> so flatline to beatline um you are on how many different podcast platforms pretty much uh, i mean pretty much every one of them that i can count 78 um uh, uh I, I no longer do you know i have the audio platforms like spotify and podtail and podbay and things like that uh not on youtube anymore um but i'm on odyssey.com and bitshoot.com um so okay. uh that's that that's um, how i do the uh i started doing the video versions of my episodes on my one year anniversary uh of the podcast which was september 5th of last year and i started now just last or the other week 
making the video versions of the podcast for patrons only. Uh, but people can, you know, and I also do other random videos like Shades Corner where I discuss various things like the blurred lines between boyhood and manhood, um, huh. the emasculation of masculinity. I'll, I'll just talk about random stuff, very short clips and, and things like right. that. And um, also, I, I've just now started, uh, as of last night, started putting uh, the Hell and Horn live streams on odyssey.com on my channel. Uh, so because we're on Trovo and they only keep them for two weeks. So I have to download okay. them and bring them over. So, yeah, it, it, it's growing. I, I think it'll I think Odyssey definitely will overtake YouTube in a couple of years. Easily. Interesting. Easily. So we'll uh, we'll we'll annotate or we'll put in the show notes. You know, uh, I know you're on Twitter. So if oh. people want to find you, I mean, if we just Google flatline to beatline, I'm sure we're going to get a whole bunch of results. But um We'll, we'll definitely throw up your, uh, if it's cool with you, we'll, we'll throw out your Twitter handle. We'll throw out the, uh, the uh, odyssey.com. Yeah. I'll, I'll send it all. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll give it all to you, brother. Cool. <laughs> no, cool. no. You might even have a link tree. I don't know. But uh, yeah, whatever you no, want I, to send over, just just DM me and I'll, and I'll put it up in the, the show notes and down in the description because we got folks on YouTube that watch and people out here listening that are just listening. So definitely check out you know, what Nightshade does um it's really cool stuff it hits on a lot of different you know important topics um and i really want to you know commend you and thank you for what you do because your platform is unique you know what you do is unique and there is nothing else out there like it you know as you said um we need to have a voice you know um there's a lot out there in the world that gets misunderstood or misconstrued and the the more positive light and the more education and the more positive influence that we can have, you know, out there, uh, I think the better off paganism and, and, and the occult and all these other, um, non-traditional religions, uh, better off will be. So good stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so much of what I do here, uh, on this podcast is, is, is random a bit, you know, it's, it's focus is on, you know, Germanic paganism and, uh, you know, depending on the person that you talk to, I think you're going to hear, well, there's Norse paganism, there's Germanic paganism, there's Saxon heathenry, there's all these like subsets of what I would consider just Germanic, you know, polytheism. Um, yeah. it, it hits on different ways, but uh, it's so random here. I don't, you know, the channel is, is more focused on some of that stuff, but this right here is a bit more of like a, let's just let our hair down, let's just kind of, you know, shoot the breeze and uh see where things go and one of the things that i mentioned to you uh before you came on here that i thought would be interesting to talk about is i haven't really gotten down the path of talking about this um the colonial pipeline debacle <laughs> where everybody's you know freaking out and pan panic buying gasoline and gas stations have no gas and it's like at, at the time of this podcast so today is is may 15th the pipeline is back online I checked some of the articles and, and I mean, they're back to normal operations. They got hacked. Um, oh, I last, think it was Monday. Last Friday. Right? La last Friday. Okay. So a, a little over a week ago, we heard about it like the first of the week when the media got a hold of it and started, you know, blasting it and making everybody lose their friggin' minds. Um, and, you know, it's, it's back online. They actually, as I understood it, at the beginning of this week, they were. It wasn't like back to normal operations, but they 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 were man it was manually back up and running, you know. Uh, but you're in Georgia, I'm in Tennessee. I have you know my wife was supposed to go visit her family in North Carolina. That got canceled because the last thing that she wanted to have happen, and what I would not want to have happen, of course, is you know you can make it like halfway there or most of the way there to where her family is on a full tank of gas. But what happens when you get out there, you know? there's there is no gas you know just because everybody's stupid and wants to panic buy all the stuff or uh or what happens if you you know you do get to a gas station and people are you know being hostile about it um i don't know have you have you talked about it on any of your platforms since this has happened or if you have you shared any thoughts about it because i've remained mostly silent about it just because i think it's obvious that people are idiots and yeah. if you're one of these people that are panic I say panic buying, but if you think that you're like, no, 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 man, I'm preparing. I'm pre preparing for what? 
this ain't the apocalypse, man. This ain't, you know, gas ain't going away. It's just a temporary shut, you know, it was a temporary shutdown for cybersecurity attack. Well, I mean, I mean, look, look at the other side of it, Jesse, is, is this. It, it, it teaches us a lesson. I, I've been a bushcrafter and a prepper for over 20 mm-hmm. years, right? <laughs> and it teaches you people are automatically assuming that gas is always readily available and nothing will ever happen. And they become lackadaisical um, or lackadaisical uh, in, yeah. in their behavior. And, you know, one should always, especially in the rural areas, keep gas cans, you know, for lawnmowers and weed eaters and stuff like that. Always have mm-hmm. that. Never, never go below a half a tank ever. That's kind of a rule of thumb, especially when you travel. Oh, yeah. So for me, it, it hasn't really affected me negatively. Uh, and I have to give a shout out to the gas attendants at these stations. They are doing absolutely phenomenal and they are handling things. I have not experienced anything uh, besides long lines in which they go pretty quickly, but it's mm-hmm. never been chaotic. I haven't even really seen many things on price gouging really at all. Unlike what was it? 2016 where we went through this and people were charging $6 a gallon. Oh yeah. I remember that. I was yeah. actually on the road working on the road you know yeah exactly so uh, i i mean i i have an experience i think by middle of next week i think the prices will go down i mean right we had about a 36 cent to 51 cent increase uh i mean it's anywhere from 289 to 304 305 um so i I mean that's 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 pretty good but uh fortunately on I haven't, I'm not aware of any negative things that have happened. I've heard about fist fights that have happened in other places, uh, things like that. But, you know, hey, maybe they'll teach you a lesson and prepare, you know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Especially in rural areas like, like mine. I mean, when you when people know there's a storm coming, what do they do? They hit the gas stations just in mm-hmm. case your generators go out or whatever. So hopefully yeah. it, it has taught people something. That's another good point, too, um, because I'll, I'll be honest, you know, when – uh the only reason i think that you know we 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 had this happen is because of what the media did to blow it out of proportion or people you know they they reported it which i guess you know arguably is it their job yeah maybe so but the way people took it it's like oh no there's not going to be any gas forever now i get the i get what you're saying as far as you know preparedness and being prepared but that goes back to you know, if you're already doing that, this is it kind of it kind of goes back to, to me like uh, over a year ago when we started getting word of this pandemic. That's we're, we're now starting to see, you know, restrictions being lifted. We're going to talk a little bit about that on the podcast, too. But, uh, you know, same sort of thing happened. You know, everybody was like, oh, no. Oh, gosh. You know, like, let's buy everything. Let's let's buy all the toilet paper. Let's, you know, and and. If, if, you know, a lot of people like maybe yourself, uh, some of my friends, myself included, you know, we already had a, a small surplus of things just like normal, you know what I mean? Like we've always had meat in the freezer. We've always had rolls of, you know, garbage bags, toilet paper, you know, just the modern day commodities, things that you may not need right then and there, but you always have a, a surplus of uh, it's in storage, you know what I mean? Um, so it was like when 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 things start to hit the fan, um, you're not one of those that are just like caught with your pants down and scrambling and and you know potentially putting yourself or others in harm's way just to figure it out. But oh uh, yeah, like you're saying, <clears throat> a lot of people do have uh, you know generators and things that are their um, maybe not primary, but but a big part of their. Uh, you know, how things go for their daily lives. You know, people have, you know, electricity that is powered by their generators that need gas. You know, that's how they live. Um, so. Well, e- e- even rainwater. Uh, and in certain states, it's illegal to collect rainwater collect and use, of, uh, use it for electricity. Yeah. But <laughs> also weapons got, uh, had a huge increase um, during yep. that time. And stocking up on on uh, food a lot of people they shop as they need and it's it's like what's the harm in buying four extra cans of soup or vegetables just to have it there Uh, i mean Mm -hmm. sure you i know people that literally have housefuls of food i mean you go into a spare bedroom that's large and they've got a stock to the ceiling 
Yeah. Right. Uh, things of that nature. I, I've seen people have more guns than they have food. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you know, with the, you know, when it all started, people had more toilet paper and I'm like, well, that doesn't do anything for you, man. You need to survive. You can go outside yeah. and use leaves. You can use old t-shirts and then wash them. You don't need toilet paper. Right. Uh, you know, so people, they, they panic and, you know, look who's profiting during mm-hmm. this pandemic all right so yeah that's what you got a question as well i also thought it was you know because i always look at things in in you know with our world with my worldview and and as you as a germanic heathen uh practicing in the similar things um the the importance of um preparedness and industriousness and just not being an island but but being part of a a group or, or a collective or a community tribe, if you will, that helps each other, you know, um, because the world's a big place and it's, you know, everybody's not our problem, <laughs> you know, um, we're not supposed to help everybody. We have our people who we are nearest and dearest to and with that, that, that we can help and are there for. And I've had, you know, I've, I've been able to help others that are close to me and others that are close to me help have helped me, you know, family, extended family. Uh, and I was raised that way, you know, even though it wasn't heathenry, it wasn't called heathenry. It was, you know, granted it was a, you know, religiously it was, it was Christianity, but fundamentals and, and morale, uh, morality, you know, that, that sort of stuff, uh, you, you can't, you can't really put a, a religious title to it. It's like, you take care of your people, you take care of your community, you take care of your tribe. So, uh, my, my, mine was the other way around. Um, I mean, I didn't grow up in a, in a strict household. I mean, you know, baptized Roman Catholic, did the whole Latin masses and midnight masses when I was younger. And uh, But my father is a retired U.S. Army Green Beret. And, you know, he was always one that said, uh, you know, fight for those who can't fight for themselves. And uh, mm. always watch out for one another. Don't believe everything you see and hear. And I've got two younger brothers, and we all have our own talents and, and, and gifts and everything. And yeah, you know, I, I was always the, the black sheep, always prepping and doing stuff like that and getting laughed right. at. And I'm like, oh, you know, see, now, now you're calling, now you're not laughing so much. So, I mean, yes, first and foremost is the hearth at home. <clears throat> always, always take care of yourself and your family first. And if you can help other people, do so, but not to the detriment of you and your family. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and don't let people always know that you're helping other people because then you're a target and people are going to come in marauders, things like that. So uh, it just, it Discretion. is what it is. Yeah, ex- exactly. So, you know, having <clears throat> uh, personal moral values and ethics and family values, I teach my two youngest daughters, they're five and four years old. And they're young, but they, you know, they're understanding um, little by little that, you know, we have to watch out for each other. Because if you, if, if I were to get on one of them, I've got the other one saying, leave my sister alone, right? So, <laughs> you know, they kind of getting it. <laughs> they, yeah, they, they get it. And, and when they're, when they're teamed up, it's, it's actually pretty awesome to see especially when they're outside playing and uh, helping each other out do things. It's, it's really beautiful to, to, to watch. And so when, unfortunately in today's society, you know, something almost cataclysmic has to happen before we start helping each other out. But when it does happen, it, it is really a sight to see. It is really amazing that people put their own personal opinions and <clears throat> biases and things like that aside just to help their fellow human beings. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I've uh, I remember growing up as a kid because I'm a um, I'm the oldest of two, right? So me and my sister, um, so you know, baby sister, big brother. Um, my mom raised us. My mom and dad raised us to uh, understand that you know, no matter what, like you two are the best friends that you will ever have. You've literally shared your whole lives together, and and if nothing else comes to your aid, if, if, if everything else fails or whatever, you always have each other and then you shouldn't understand that. And, and we grew up, um, we grew up in our, in our childhood and into our youth. And uh, of course, as I got older, um, I, I, I kind of drifted away 
from the family unit and was starting to think about making my own life. So there was a there was a short period of time where, you know, my decisions and my choices um, kind of separated us, uh, as it were, from that really really close connection. But because we had such a close connection up until that point, um, even though there was a severance or, or a separation. Uh, years had gone by, whatever, maybe we hadn't really done a whole lot of things. We hadn't talked. She was, you know, living her own life, um, doing her own stuff. Uh, we were still able to always come back to each other and be like, you know, we got you. We, we got each other. Yeah, absolutely. Um, blood, blood is thicker than water. And un unfortunately, many people don't have those connections to, to their family. And, I, you know, as you get older, <clears throat> you start realizing the, the value uh, of family. Because when I was younger, I, I was wild. I didn't care. I didn't care about cultures. I didn't care about my right. heritage is nothing. Uh, you, you know, I was gang banging and mm -hmm. I was, I didn't care uh, about anything. Uh, you know, I didn't, I, I was more worried about if I was going to live to see the next day, sometimes w whether I was going to survive another hour uh, and doing just stupid shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> just, uh, just doing right. it, you know but as you get older you start especially when you start having a family then you really start seeing the value of it and you end up sounding like your parents <laughs> you know? but they always told you yeah you start saying it to the same thing it's like don't do stupid things don't do something to embarrass your family you know the you know and, and the chivalry is gone as well with with family as well you know you shouldn't do anything don't air your dirty laundry in public don't don't mm -hmm. do stuff that's going to give your family name a, a bad name or a bad reputation. So, yeah, um, you know, people don't care anymore. They're more worried about clubbing and partying and watching TV and wasting their days away on complete nonsense. Right. I see that too with, uh, I've talked about this in other contexts, but social media in general provides a platform for people, which is great to have a voice and to share their thoughts and to share their voices. Unfortunately, um, people think that that's just an open invitation to talk about whatever and be whichever sort of way. And, you know, this is it. And I've been guilty of this. I think we all have. Um, Cause I, you know, I look back on some of my old social media posts and I just go, Oh man, dude, what were you like? Why did you say that? What were you thinking? You, you know, I cringe looking at, you know, the 2011 or whatever version of myself <laughs> but I see people nowadays even you know um just the way they present themselves on 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 social media I'm like if that's how you are pre presenting yourself to the public to an audience to you know people um that that don't really know you how is that a reflection on who you actually are and the people who do know you you know what i mean like it's it, it, it doesn't look well on you and me as 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 the person i am i always looking at you know i guess there's a fine line between you know caring about your reputation your refrain and not caring what other people think about you and just being who you are like there's a fine line like be true and be be a, be sincere but your reputation is important at least it is to me so yeah, no, I, 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 absolutely. I, I mean, it's just like, <clears throat> I'm sure, you, you know, your father told you the same thing. Always keep your word, right? Mm -hmm. And unless in extreme circumstance, be a person of your word because your word is your bond. And a lot of people, you know, like, it, you know, if you and I came to agreement on something, it was more, hey, shaking hands and hey, your word is your yeah. bond. You say you're going to do something and people don't do that anymore. And on social media, people tend to flap their gums and run their mouths and think they're big and bad in reality they're they're, they're not um and of course i've looked back on old posts that i've done old uh yeah. polls that i'll do on twitter just asking basic questions and i'm like yeah you, you know but it's a good thing being pot you know talking to literally hundreds of people every single day podcasting stuff like that is you and i've lived all over the world and mm -hmm. you know you still learn Every culture. single day. Yeah. yeah. You still learn so much, but there are people who haven't even left their own state or own country and they want to talk about world affairs. <clears throat> and I yeah. believe that there was something in the hobble mall saying, don't talk about worldly affairs if you're not a well-traveled person. Right. So, yep. 
I, I mean, people tend to talk out of their rear end, and <laughs> it's quite. Well, they funny. let their emotions drive yeah. what they say. You know, they'll get mad or upset or they're they're overwhelmed. And that's another thing too, as I've noticed. I don't know if you've noticed this too, but the fragility of people nowadays. Wow, like what happened? You know what but I mean? Like, you, hey, you, I'm not you, saying. You can you can even review calculators without somebody being offended in some way. You know, I mean, people's skin has been too. I, I literally did a tweet the other day on this, and I put a picture of calculators. People will get offended by th certain things, you know. And, and it, oh boy, it is it's bad, but it's all part of the game. Uh, that's what yeah. what I discussed last night on Hail and Horns was, uh, you know, I always encourage people to watch the movie Equilibrium with Christian Bale, where they just get rid of emotions. Everybody's the same. They're automatons, total 1984 mm. type of thing. This is all part of the game. And people don't want to see it. They don't want to hear about it. They don't want to pay attention to it until it affects their wallet. Once it affects yep. their wallet, now they're going to pay attention. And people, they, they don't care. They want to know about the latest fashions and video games and, and you know. Yeah, what's trending. And, and not just that, but also men becoming more feminine that is mm -hmm. another thing that it's like no men are forged out in the world right don't sit there and play video games for hours and hours now no no that, that's just not right and it oh boy yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can go on and on about that one yeah that's a whole other subject matter because <laughs> i mean you know look i i feel that i am the person i am today because of how well, I am the person I am today because of how I was raised, the things that I did. I, you know, and I, and I may sound like really just old fashioned when it comes to this, but, you know, I worked for over a decade on a farm. You know, my dad is a carpenter by trade and I learned to work with my hands from a very young age. I remember being brought to a job site in the Hamptons that he was working on uh, when I was 11 years old picking up construction debris for the GC that my dad was working for, you know, and the guy paid me, you know, five bucks an hour, you know, when I was 11 years old, I made, you know, 40 bucks that day thinking I was, you know, the hot stuff because I had cash in my hand and I worked for it, you know, but I learned that at a very young age. I remember mowing my parents' yard, you know, uh, as part of like my, uh, you know, you know, you got like a weekly allowance or, or, or whatever, but it was like, you know, now that you're getting older, now that you're um, capable, now it's time to contribute to the home. Now it's time to contribute. And we don't see that in, in the younger generation these days. We don't. These kids, you know, six, seven, eight years old, man, they got iPhones. They got, they got more expensive phones than I got. You know? I don't, I don't even media own, account. I, I don't even own a cell phone. Like literally, everybody's shocked. I don't own one. The last one I had was in 2002. Really? And it was old uh, AT&T Singular. Remember that? Yes. And yeah. Gray phones. That little, little, yep. Yep. And, you know, what's weird. And those kind of phones are coming back and they're more expensive than the smartphones. Why don't I have a phone? I don't want one. Okay. I, yeah. I just, I don't. And I'm a tech geek. All right. I'm a computer geek. Oh, I just don't want a cell phone because I don't want to be tracked everywhere. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I was the same way. I, I remember stepping out of line when I was six years old and having to cut the grass with a pair of scissors. <laughs> uh, I, you know, and then from a young age, I was in Germany when the Berlin Wall was still up and seeing the violence. And, and wow. you know, I, I think the earliest time I can remember, I was about six years old and they had steps on the Berlin wall that you can just look and it says, don't climb on the wall. Don't do that. And one of my friends was right there, climbed the wall and had his head blown off by Easter because they were told don't wow. do that. And when you have blood splatter all over you and you're six years old, yeah, you get a rude awakening very damn quickly of what life is really like. And that's what boosted me into politics and studying geopolitics and domestic politics and foreign policies and really mm -hmm. looking at different agendas because it, it, it just takes that one second, that one instance, and boom, your whole life can change. And from then, I just, man, it messes with you. <laughs> I uh, you you know, yeah. I, <laughs> that's not, I mean, I have nothing to compare that to, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm 
quite blown away and speechless at that just hearing that you know i'm sure everybody else listening and watching and people like, see wow books. that just that escalated quickly <laughs> you know yeah, we are. It, and unfortunately there are children that's nowadays that actually see a lot worse you're right it, no they see a lot worse and there's madness out there man yeah it's complete madness and kids starving and you know just horrible trafficking things. human trafficking it's such a it's such a thing that people don't want to talk about or know about but it, it happens man it, and it happens more than you think oh yeah it's, it's women absolutely. children women that are pregnant with children getting impregnated for that purpose you know man like crazy stuff dude uh, oh yeah and, and i've always encouraged a lot of the the men folk out there you know step up and be be fathers be be a man take care of your kids be there for that because yeah you know, I'm not going to get into the whole other LGBTQ stuff, but when a man has, uh, you know, it becomes a father, right? Be a father, you know, do out mm -hmm. there, you know, because it is so critical in a child's life is to have a good mother and have a good father. Because when one or either one or either negligent or absent, it throws a kid out of whack. And nowadays parents are literally having kids and then throwing them in daycare. That screws a kid up. It's yeah messes the child up and and i'm a product of that you know but uh, i mean this this is why i and i've said this openly the a lot of the reason why society is so messed up now is because the roles of men and women have switched and they have become blurred and and yeah it, it has caused a lot of problems and the way thing, you know, again, it, and you could probably get on different sides of the argument, depending on who you talk to. It's, you know, well, if it worked back then, it can work now. But then you'll also be like, well, you know, you got to be progressive. You know, you got to advance with the times. You got to. I think there's room for everything there, you know, being progressive, working towards bettering yourselves, enhancing what's, you know, you know, just because. Just because you're, uh, you know, using a wheelbarrow now doesn't mean you can't use a tractor because the tractor is better. It's more productive, that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? But when it comes to just like some fundamentals, family units. Got to got to start somewhere. Got to have it, you know, got to have the roots uh, planted strongly. And I feel like that's, you know, with, you know, mother and a father. Yeah, um, exactly. If your heart is not strong. Mm -hmm. then a lot of outs you know on the outside world it'll fall apart because no matter how chaotic the world can become if you could it, it's always great to at least know that you can always return home with family yes. uh, even if it's for a short time just to kind of recuperate from the the, the chaos of society and yeah. if somebody doesn't have that you know and in various ways maybe their parents have passed away or whatever you know just being around other family members in, in, in good fun and mm -hmm. well really it's really um chicken soup for the soul <laughs> no you're right i can i can you know I've, I've been fortunate and not everybody is um as fortunate as you know others but um as an example i'm, I'm i've been fortunate to have a a really you know strong family unit and even though i'm you know a thousand plus miles away from where I'm from, you know, from home, as it were. Um, whenever I do go back, you know what I mean? It's like, Tennessee is where I live. Tennessee is my home. It, it's what I've made my home. But when I go back to New York, when I'm around, you know, the old home, you know what I mean? Uh, it's like, it, it feels so much different. It's like, there's always going to be that pull for me. There's like this inner gravity well that always draws me back there. And I think it has to do with so much of the, the amount of weird that, that gets woven um, in, in, in cases like that. Not everybody has, has had that. Not everybody experiences that. Um, that's, that that's true. Be, you know, if, if you look at it, it's going to be weird coming up on this show. If you look at the quota N, right, the, uh, for those who speak Arabic, um, uh, the, the quota N Majid, it, it literally says in one of the surahs or the chapters, you know, your parents bore you in hardship and when they get older lower your wings of humility upon them you know so pretty much just saying hey look they take they took care of you uh when they get older take care of them help them out do whatever but people yeah. are like no no man i gotta worry about doing this and this and this and I'm, I'm telling you there's really no greater benefit than helping take care of your family especially your parents um, absolutely hey they they wiped your ass when you were a baby Yep. All right. I mean, they fed you, they had sleepless nights and, and, you know, I hope my daughters, when I get 
to that point, they'll, they'll help me around, even though I'll push them away because I'm prideful, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, but lower your wings of humility to, to your family, you know, siblings and uncles and parents, especially. And I think yeah. if we started doing that, I think it would, man, I'm telling you, it's just a, a great feeling, as you stated before. It's just something that opens you up inside and just like, oh, it's like, yes, everything will be okay. It's like having hot chocolate on a cold day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's wholesome and, yeah, it's, and it's healing. It, it's therapeutic. It's healing. It's, you know, it's as it should be. It feels and, and that way for a reason. And, and for Which us, and in our beliefs, you know, your and I beliefs, I mean, the gods will reward us and the goddesses, definitely. And I, I do believe that even the Husvatir and the Landvatir, even so much so what would greatly reward you for taking care of your family. I mean, they do so for taking care of the land, take care of your family. It's all the same. Yep. Yep. Well, they're they're tied to us in that way. You know, the the the, the house whites, the Vatir of the home, mm-hmm. you know, uh, if they're if if the house is in disarray or if the house is in turmoil, they're upset. It it, it uh-huh. just it trickles on down. So when you know happy home, uh, happy life, happy whites, you know, yeah, uh, the vatir that live and, and coexist with us, um, it does. It, it I, I definitely agree. And our ancestors, re, you know, feel that you know because they are always with us too. A lot of people um, don't always remember. The importance of of our ancestors you know like you say you know we're here our parents did everything that that we couldn't do and our youth and infancy and stuff took care of us and we couldn't um and we are a product of them and, and our and our ancestors you know we owe our lives to them you literally. know just just like <laughs> the, just like the band uh in this moment they did a song i think it's called roots and you know, in, in this verse in there, I'm strong because of you, because of, you know, just talking about the answers. I'm strong because I'm alive today because of you, all your hardships that you survived in every way. I wouldn't be, none of us would be here today watching this or listening to this if it wasn't for our ancestors having the fortitude and the goal and, and the, the survival yeah. mentality to keep pushing forward. And every everybody has ancestors that maybe had money and definitely had ones that were poor. And mm-hmm that's something and when you take care of your hearth and home and you take care of yourself and all that i'm telling you that ancestral energy surge always comes through yeah uh, especially when you start learning about your ancestors that really just does something oh, yeah. to you now because old all when man. i said when i was younger i didn't care <clears throat> I, I i did not care at all about my ancestry uh, and I'm Scottish and Irish and uh, Danish and German, right? So I didn't care. And I was more worried about how are you going to benefit and profit me? Because mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't associate with people unless they were going to profit me in some way. All right. So, and when you have a mentality like that, it erodes your soul. It yeah. Really does. Uh, and it's a short term. Yeah, man. Very short term. And that's why I did my, I do my podcast. Uh, you know, when people create podcasts, they usually do it for the here and now, but in my mind, I was creating a generational legacy. So when I can't do it anymore, my daughters are step up and, and uh, help people, as I say, break through the noise. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm hoping they will continue on. Their kids will continue it on because like I said before, nobody focuses on the ones that are are not popular. So who else is going to help each other? Yeah, it's it is selfish. Uh, it's, it's selfless. You're not going to profit a whole lot. Maybe you can, but who else is going to take the time to actually give a damn? That's no, the problem right. nowadays. I can understand worrying about yourself first and foremost and your family, but hey, extend that out. And like you said, start with the hearth and home, and then work your way out to the community. And that's what I have been doing with my podcast. And that's yeah, what I've done with creating the Viper Alliance. Uh, you know, which is, mm-hmm. is really, it, it's, it's an alliance for the first time in history. And I've looked it up between pagans, witches, Satanists, and Luciferians to combat cyber bullying and stalking uh, and to, and it could be rel- a, a, a support network on mundane things it could be computer issues or uh, auto mechanics or whatever. Someone's going to be able to help you. Right. And wow. because it's lacking. So that's why I created it. And, and whoever is getting bullied, because they're a pagan or which hell hell we've even had christians come and ask for our help and we're almost Hmm. at a hundred members already you know and we're doing something great so i'm i'm i don't have a whole lot of money but 
I'm trying to make a, a positive change in this world with my podcast, with the Viper Alliance, and trying to give back to the world that's given me so much. That is tremendous. Uh, and I think a lot of people appreciate it. I know, I mean, for, for my sake, uh, with what I do, you know, the, the with Midgard Musings and with this podcast, just you never know what happens on some of these random ramblings, you know, you never know uh, with the guests that I get on here, just what, where the directions end up leaning towards, you know, we may have some topics that we want to discuss, but, you know, we started talking about how, you know, well, shoot, you know, you, you came on here and it was, you know, uh, gas shortages. And now here we are talking about this and, you know, making a difference in our communities and stuff. So it's, it's a great, it's I not scripted. It. It's, it's not it's, scripted. It, yeah, you, you never know. That's this. why I do it with my podcast. <laughs> I don't script it. The, yeah. My guests don't have no idea what I'm going to ask ever. Yeah. Yeah. So I love it. And it kind of does segue into one of the things that I did want to talk about, actually. And it's amazing that it worked out because, you know, with the pandemic, uh, you know, we're in post. I don't want to say like we're not in a pandemic anymore because it's obviously, you know, look around. But um, we're, we're getting into the post pandemics. Uh, post-pandemic era or age of things we made it through a really rough time there's you know the vaccine personal feelings aside whatever things are starting to change um and and i think they're trending in a good way at least i'd like to think so and and as we you know look at um as we look at the uh you good oh there you are you froze up on me Okay. All right. Um, let me, uh, let me, let me recap in case we missed it. Cause you froze up on me too. So I just want to make sure, but what I was saying, as far as what we've thus far talked about and how it segues into one of the topics that I had wanted to mention here was we are in post pandemic times. We're moving towards a, uh, you know, with the vaccine and everything with, you know, personal feelings aside, it's, you know, we're, I think I like to think that we're, we're trending in a positive way um globally um and because of that you know people are like well let's get back together let's start doing things that we haven't been able to do on the scale that we were able to do it you know over the last year or more um and so much of so much of that involves you know community work doing things for people uh in person type all everything that we've everything that we've done over the last year has has separated uh, us from each other people i mean you know can't go to school yeah that, can't I mean, go to work you know can't go to events we haven't uh, had you know here in our area uh, for the middle tennessee heathens you know we haven't done anything publicly in, in like a, a restaurant or a, a park or whatever like we haven't done anything uh since last year um in 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 the interest of safety you know, not wanting to put any anybody in the community uh, in, a, in a position that they felt uncomfortable in because of the situation. And now that we're trending in a position in, in, in a direction that makes that is going to make that feasible again, it's exciting to think about. Um, and, and I think people are itching for that, you know, people are really wanting to, to get back to life well, as normal. Hu human human beings are social creatures. That, that yep. is that is a fact. And the thing is, is um, it'll never get back to normal. It, it will never. In fact, you don't want it to go back to normal if you are have your ears to the ground of what's really going on in the world. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, you know, like I said, I grew up all over the world. I'm used to metropolitan areas, but, you know, out, out where I'm at, I, I'm happy with it. Um, I, mm. I like, I like peopling, you know, I like being around people. We're social, you know, not a social butterfly or anything, but, um, you know, I still wear a mask, uh, yeah. everywhere because I've had COVID and I literally thought I was dying. Uh, and because when it first started, I didn't think anything of it. And, uh, <clears throat> but when your lungs are being twisted inside out, you, you, and having to be away from your kids, you think twice. Um, so, perspective uh, yeah it, it's um I'll, I'll just say um for, for me uh, i'm anti-vaccine because i've seen what it does to people and i've seen the medical reports that are not being put out but um the the thing is is you know 
people are, are wanting to go out and party and all that, and they're not learning the lesson that it yeah. has to teach us. Yeah. Right? People don't want to do that. They don't want, they don't care. They're, they're worried about their here and now, what can I benefit from it? They don't mm. care about, okay, what am I learning from this? And it's about self-reliance. It's also a chance to reset and really strengthen those uh, family bonds that maybe were absent before. People don't see about that. They're more like, man, I need to get out to get myself a beer, right? I want to go partying. I want to go doing this. I want to go shopping. Yeah. yeah. Go to concerts and all that stuff. Yeah. Entertainment. Yeah. You, you know? know, hey, hey, and a good concert's great. You know? For sure. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. I'm not taking that, not taking away from that at all. I guess I was looking at it more like, you know, um, how we talk all the time about the importance of community from a heathen perspective, you know, that you have to have a, a strong family unit. You have to have a, a solid community before you can build a tribe that is an extension of your family, you know, and the community is here. It's just how you get to know each other really well if you can't meet in person because of, you know, social restrictions and things like that. And because of where things are trending, you know, again, what information gets shared doesn't get shared. It's people are looking at it like, well, I'm vaccinated now or, or I'm, the, you know, like, let's let's get back to quote unquote normal. But like you said, it normal, what was normal then is not going to be what is normal going forward ever, you know, like that's, that was then and different times, you know, we, we've, <laughs> the world has changed drastically. Yeah, no, noticed, I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I, absolutely, absolutely. And I, I think in many ways, um, you know, people who are in severe lockdowns, um, you know, they're, they're, they're complaining about it. And I can understand, you know, I, I can understand wanting to having to go outside and stuff like that. I, I, I'm blessed by the gods to be able in, in a very rural area, but it, it's, it's a chance to really look at your shadow self and work on yourself. I mean, there's things happen for a reason, good or bad things happen for a reason. And I'm, I'm glad people are starting to see the benefit of it, but Hey, you know, Jesse, you could have always come to me and talk to me about things or sharing things, helping each other out that, you know, it doesn't have to be face to face. It doesn't actually have to be in a specific heathen, uh, heathen tribe or anything like that. It's right. hey, we're, we're friends and we're always there for each other at, at any point in time. And I, I think it's really helped at least on social media. Um, you, you know, if you notice Twitter and all that has become deadened over the past couple of weeks, it's been dying down and dying down because people are out and about. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of social media has um, YouTube. Yeah. Um, creators all over the place are noticing, you know, I'm not getting the amount of subs that I used to get. I'm not getting the kind of growth that I would see views and things like that. What's happening? Is it YouTube? Whatever. That's a good point. I didn't even think of that as, you know, probably saw such a spike in growth over the last year because of the isolation because people weren't out now people are back out and they're like the hell with all this internet stuff <laughs> i've seen but, it too much but, for the last year i don't need to look, not see it look at the great look at the positive side of it one you have more people know who you are so they're automatically going to go back to watching your stuff and two you were pushing forward you know i started my podcast in september of 2019 bam. And then pandemic hits like six months later. <laughs> so, yeah. and I was pushing through and pushing through, you did the same thing. And you, I remember when you came on, you were on episode five and 75. I remember on episode five, you had like 800 subscribers. <laughs> That's what you had. And now you're at what? Almost 4,000. Yeah. I mean, both, look, yeah, getting look, there, look, yeah. Look at what you've done, man. And look, look at the hope you've given people. Think about that. Right. And look how you have benefited and the connections you have made. And those are hopefully be lifelong connections that can keep going on forward and networking. That's True. what it's all about. It's not yeah. about right the here and now. It's about what can you do in the long term, because people want short term benefits and to hell with any type of long term benefits. And you know, mm -hmm. I think that's why you do your show and I do my podcast is for the long term. Yeah, right? you know, and that's it's a that's marathon, it. right? Not a sprint. Yeah. Exactly. Got and, sus and sustainability. And I, have a, I have a feeling. I have a feeling by this time next year, you'll be above 10,000 people, 10,000 subscribers. I really do believe that, you know, I mean, that'd be wild. That'd be wild, man. You yeah. Know, and let's, I let's think keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, because you provided a source of distraction uh, for, for people. And so did I, 
right? Mm-hmm. So it, it's good. My my stuff has gone up and down. It's fluctuated, things like that. But I mean, since September 2019, with I'm I'm going to be doing episode 83 today. Uh, I'm almost at a million downloads. That's nuts. Yeah, like, that's fantastic. That, that, that's like, combined a million with, of anything. Yeah, like that's wild. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 combined. But you know, I had to create my own path. I literally, my podcast is literally creating its own path. Yeah. Right. So I, I was expecting lot. to walk through swamps and over mountains and you're doing the same thing. You've had to walk through those swamps and climb those mountains and you're going to, you're prospering from that. So l- look at the bright side of things. Yeah. And I don't know if you've seen it too, but um, I see a lot of other, and I don't know if, if it's just because of algorithms, but um, I'm noticing, or I'm finding a lot more content creators and pagans that are doing things similar, but in their own way. You know what I mean? Like they may have been there and I just hadn't noticed them um, or they came out since. Um, and it's a great thing. Like Eric Shervin's another one. You know what I mean? Like I found his channel right around the same time I was doing my, th- my thing. Um, he had already started, you know, doing his, I forget how much sooner or prior to, to mine, but, and then since then it's just like, Oh, I found this one and I found that one. And then there really good stuff too you know like oh yeah absolutely there's, there's a ton of trash out there but there's also a, a good number of, of really solid and and, and uh, positive influencers and and content creators out here that are doing great things in so many different ways and usually the, the, good, the good ones honestly don't have an extreme amount of followers the ones that have like yeah. a million followers yet only have like I don't know, one or two, like 200 views per video. Uh, that's easily, they bought their subscribers. They bought bots. That's what they did. Yeah. yeah. And, and to where you earned yours, you earned you and Eric and so many other, they've earned their work and their way through. And those are always suppressed by profits. Yeah. And I would always rather that, you know what I mean? I, I don't, I don't want fake numbers. I don't want fake likes. I don't want fake this, that, or the other. I, you know, if, if, if all it was, was 15 people, or 20 people or a hundred people or whatever. Like if that's all it was, but they were sincere and they were the real deal that fine by me, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, and I'm actually, you know, on Odyssey and bitch I'm getting more views over there than when I was on YouTube. Huh. Right. So like literally triple the amount. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. Might have to look into that too. Keep my, keep my options open at least. <laughs> well, you, you, you can sync your YouTube channel to those platforms. And that oh, way, dude? if, you, if okay. you upload something on YouTube, it automatically goes to those. Gotcha, gotcha. So that that's why that, that why is it that because I I think YouTube it'll be dead in five years. It'll become a MySpace very quickly. Hmm. Because of all because if you got to think YouTube was created uh, from its the the mouth of of its creator, Sather said YouTube was designed for the government, um, businesses, and advertising. Literally, that's what it was. Just in, in, its intention was, but then it blew out of proportion. Yeah, yeah, kind of a, a monster was created, as it were. <laughs> yeah, and even though some amazing content on there, I mean, some just oh, for sure. great content yeah. on there, but you're seeing a shift, and it's going over to the alternatives. Yeah. Hmm. I'm just catching it early on. Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, I am uh, going to be wrapping this up here soon, um, and as always, um, with every random Heathen Ramblings podcast to always pick a random stanza from the Apovamol and uh, read from a number of different translations um, and kind of, you know, give a uh, analysis or thought and ideas and invite, if I got guests, you know, invite your insights and always ask the listeners and the viewers to, to share their thoughts as well. So um, I, picked, uh, I picked a stanza from the Havamal, which is... Uh, Depending on the translation that you read it from, because there's so many different ones and, and, and how they get, I guess, numbered or whatever. It stands a 145 or 146 or 147, just depending on <laughs> the translation that you read it from. So I'll start with, uh, uh, we got Auden. I usually read Auden and Taylor, Hollander, Bellows, uh, Thorpe. Um, and the Jackson Crawford, sometimes Oliver Bray. See, Oliver Bray is 144, Bellows is 146, Thorpe is 147, 
Jackson Crawford, Auden and Taylor and Hollander is 145. But so for anybody listening, watching, whichever, you know, version you're reading from, um, I'll start with Auden and Taylor. So this stanza reads that uh, it is better, better to not ask than to over pledge as a gift then or as a gift that demands a gift better not to send than to slay too many. Uh, the Hollander version or translation reads, "'Tis better unasked than offered over much, for A, doth a gift look for gain. Tis better unasked than offered over much. Thus did Odin write ere the earth began, when up he rose in after time." Bellows reads, "'Tis better, better no prayer than too big an offering. By thy getting, measure thy gift. Better is none than too big a sacrifice. So Thund of old, Thund is another, I think, kenning for Odin. Uh, so Thund of old wrote, ere man's race began when he rose on high, when home he came. Uh, Bray is a better ask for too little than offer too much, like the gift should be the boom. Better not to send than to overspend. Thus Odin graved are the world ere, sorry, ere the world began. Then he rose from the deep and came again. Uh, Thorpe is, tis better not to pray than to offer too much. A gift ever looks to a return. Tis better not to send than to over, than too much consume. And then the uh, Jackson Crawford, which is from his uh, wanderers, Paul Vimal, uh, it, it is better not to pray at all than to pray for too much. Nothing will be given that you won't repay. It is better to sacrifice nothing than to offer too much. Odin carved this before the birth of humankind when he rose up and returned again. Uh, and I think that it, it, it is a good reminder for uh, especially like newer pagans. Um, I don't really hear about this type of thing too much in the more seasoned audience of folks when it comes to, well, how, you know, what do I give as an offering? What do I sacrifice to this God or to that God? And then they, they worry about the, the specifics so much. I think because they don't, they don't want to offend anybody. They don't want to do it wrong. You know what I mean? Um, and sometimes it's better to just not to ask for anything, not to pray, not to gift, um, than to overgive. Um, or to, you know, sometimes it's just best to take a step back and, and be a bit discreet or, or you know, cause again, it, a gift is always going to seek a gift in return. That's part of this reciprocation. Part of what we, at least as in Germanic heathenry understand is the gifting cycle. You know, we gift in anticipation and in hopes of being gifted back. So what we, you know, what we, what we receive from the sacred, uh, or even from our people, you know, even from the, our folk, I, I feel like this is something that's missed uh, or lost in our communities so much, you know, um, the gifting cycle does exist in profane space, like with our people, with amongst each other. Um, so I don't know, like in modern times, you know, a gift can be your time, you know, a gift can be non-material things not not a, not necessarily monetary gifts or material gifts gifts can be you know the time spent um, or you know maybe even things like this you know where you know you're taking an hour out of your day to come on to my podcast and be heard by all these people and seen by all these people as you know i see that as like a uh, you know exchanging gifts with one another you know there's knowledge to be shared there's wisdom to be had and gained and um well, that, for, the, that, for the long term, that stands, it comes down to one word, modesty. It comes down to modesty. And I always tell young witches and pagans and stuff, the person who does not have a lot, but gives the very best that they have and that they can is worth a lot more than somebody who has everything to give because they are abundant in wealth. So yeah. To me, somebody can go out and offer gold as an uh, as an offering to the gods or goddesses. Uh, to me, somebody who who carves something out of a twig, out of, out of a branch, that is worth a hell of a lot more than those gold pieces. Mm -hmm. 
because it's about the energy. It's about modesty. It's about chivalry. It's about respect. So somebody who is impoverished but offers the only bread that they have to their guest, and they are treated like kings and queens um, yeah. compared to somebody who offers a whole smorgasbord of food. Mm-hmm. Right? That's what it comes down to because, I mean, people tend to forget about all that. They worry about the the plastic side of it all. <laughs> right? Yeah, the, the synthetic of it. Yeah, the yeah. synthetic version yeah plastic version of it it's got to come from within and if it doesn't come from within then it's not worth anything at all it's a great point and interestingly enough uh because the way you were putting it you know uh, somebody that gives gold or that gives so many things because they have so much how is that going to impact them what 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 sacrifice is being made for them to give you know that when they've got so much return reminds me of something that even in christianity there's a, a parable that gets mentioned about, you know, the, uh, a gift um, or, an, or, or a tithe or something that was given. I'm, I'm forgetting some of the specifics of it, but basically the widow's might. I think if you were to Google the parable of the widow's might, um, M-I-T-E, not like mighty, but basically what it, what it boils down to is that this poor widow, you know, or gifted something that was the very last that she had and a rich man gave so much of what he owned that he still had so much left and the widow's gift the widow's might that poor woman's gift was way more valuable and was way more important than what that rich man gave um, because it was literally the last she had it was all she had and she gave it all and so, like you said, modesty, you know, it doesn't, and, and I always think too, that that value, the value of a gift is not placed on the giver. Value of something is, is determined on the recipient, right? Because again, something that's given to me by somebody that made it to me is, is priceless, you know, to them, it's like, well, it may, it costs me X, Y, Z to make it. And, you know, this amount of time to sit and do it. And, but to me, it's like, I can't put a price on that yeah. because, I can't buy this anywhere. I can't, you know, you made it, you did it. And, and that's what, what, that's where in the value lies, I think. So uh, when it comes to giving, when it comes to gifting, um, I think it's good to be reminded of sincerity, modesty, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot. It just needs to be sincere. It needs to come from the heart. <clears throat> I think it's Exactly, exactly. As you said, the, the greatest sometimes the greatest gift is time that you put in and the blood and sweat and tears, especially if you're making or even drawing something. Somebody somebody can offer me a Mercedes Benz and another person says, Hey man, I, I, I drew this picture for you. That picture is gonna be worth a lot more than that Mercedes, in my yes. opinion. Because not everything is about money. It's yeah. just not. You know, and I'm probably gonna be more of a friend to that person who drew me something than someone who tried to for give me. Sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, hell, I'll take a Mercedes if you want to give it away, but <laughs> I'll just take it and sell it. That's what I do. I just take right? it and sell it. Yeah. But it's, it's just like birthday gifts. You know, I don't, I don't celebrate my birthday. I don't accept gifts and I haven't since I was eight years old. Mm. I just don't, I don't, or, you know, Christmas gifts or anything like I don't, I don't take them. I'd rather give than receive. That's yeah. just who I am. But my, my daughter's little drawings of their handprints or something, it's far more valuable than if somebody gave me a hundred acres of land. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's tremendous. Well, man, I do appreciate uh, your time here um, and appreciate you, you know, wrapping with me for the last hour or so. It's been really awesome. Uh, and you're always welcome, you know, so uh, for the future and in the future, if we ever uh, come up with something again, I'll, I'll shoot it your way. And, uh, you know, you're welcome back here anytime. Oh, definitely, man. It was absolutely my pleasure, man. Definitely going to do it sometime soon. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, well, I will uh, ask everybody that's listening and watching to, you know, check the show notes, check the description, check wherever it is that you're watching for all the ways that you can um, follow and support what uh, Nightshade does on his, you know, on Flatline to Beatline, on all the ways that he does his stuff. Uh, the Viper Alliance, um, Halen Horns, everything, everything that he's a part of, it's, it's worth your time and effort to, to support. Um, so check all that stuff out. Don't forget to, you know, favorite this podcast, upvote it, whatever the platform is that you're listening on, 
requires you or asks you to do. Um, if it's free, it doesn't, doesn't hurt you to, to do that. And of course, um, share the videos around and let people know to become a member of Midgard Musings on YouTube so that you can get the, the video format as well. Uh, Nightshade, stick around um, for just a second while I end the podcast. But for everybody else that's listening and watching, hail, stay healthy out there. Uh, and until we talk again, may all of your hearth fires continue to burn bright.